Well, this is lot 40, the rye that kind of got me back into uh, Canadian whiskies. Uh, this is a Dr. Livermore presentation, and uh, I'm going to tell you a, sort of a brief history on this. Uh, this was a uh, recreation of the original Joshua Booth, goes back uh, to uh, the late 1700s. He fought... Uh, as a United Empire loyalist against the Americans in the American Revolution. I'm certain the Americans will love to hear this uh, when they're drinking a, a lot 40. But uh, anyways, uh, it was, uh, he was a, a fellow that after the war, he, he settled on Lake Ontario there near Ernstville, and he was a very successful businessman. He had something like six mills, uh, I believe one of those mills was on lot 40 and every mill, every grist mill he had, uh, he, had to, a dis, he had a still and so he was distilling this probably from a, a mash because it would be more like American whiskey it would, and in this case I believe it was a, a 90% uh, rye and 10% malted rye mash and of course today we do uh, these w these grains separately in Canada not like the states and their bourbons and that um, so it was uh, his descendant we're talking boy are we six seven six generations later so this was a six generation uh, great 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 grandfather uh, of Michael Booth who was the master blender master distiller for Hiram Walker and he he kind of recreated this somewhere around I think it was uh, 1998 and of course it it lasted for a few years and that and and uh, now when it actually disappeared I'm not certain sometime in the 2000s uh, kind of disappeared and um, you know there was a, a real callback from people that wanted to see this whiskey again so Dr. Don Livermore reintroduced the Lot 40 in uh, 2012. Uh, the recipe was changed a bit. So in 2012, it was uh, as the original 10% malt and 90% uh, uh, yeah, malted rye and 90% uh, rye. And they went back to, um, and it's, it wasn't column still, it was pot still, a 12,000 uh, liter pot still they used to go 100% uh, rye, uh, uh, no malted rye. They took that out of the, uh, out of the uh, recipe and, and, and uh, 
Dr. Don Livermore had his reasons, and uh, uh, basically uh, in 20, 2013, the new whiskey, the Lot 40, which has won an amazing number of awards, one of the, one of the most uh, award-winning whiskeys in the country, uh, at a very reasonable price, and uh, they are very focused on using uh, Brasetto rye. So uh, there's a lot we can say about the whiskey. There's a lot of people who have written up on, on this whiskey. So again, uh, it reintroduced uh, in 2012, recipe change 2013, and uh, uh, basically maybe a few tidbits about uh, Dr. Don Livermore. Um, He's written some books, actually quite a few books, but a couple of the books that I got uh, turned on to, uh, you know, just doing research and that on the whiskey, because uh, of my, I was just, I favored this whiskey, first whiskey for many, many years, that I've really said that I, I uh, in a rye whiskey, that uh, I liked, because I sort of turned off to rye. And um, I, I, I kind of mentioned to my son about this, uh, Dr. Don Livermore, he's a researcher, you know, uh, working on his doctorate and all that. So anyways, uh, he gets me a couple of these books that I mentioned to him for Christmas. And, uh, and here they are. Of course, the first book here is uh, Blending 101. And uh, the uh, second book is of course Keeper of the History. Now th th these are both fascinating books. Now this book here gives you the whole history of Canadian whiskey. Uh, it's a boy if you like history and you want to learn a little bit more how big Canadian uh, whiskey distillers were. I mean they were the largest distilleries in the world and the largest producers of whiskey at one time in the world. So um, it's an interesting history what you'll learn from this. And of course, uh, when we get into the blending 101, this is uh, the science, the, we'll say the more current science of uh, blending and distilling of whiskeys. And um, because I, I'm more of a study of the uh, Scottish and Irish uh, distillers and how they use a lot of traditional methods. And I think there's a, there, there is certainly uh, some head biting as to old traditional versus the newer methods of distilling and, and um, I, I, I believe that um, Dr. Livermore, of course to get a, you know, to get a doctorate in, uh, and he was a, 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 a really a chemist, but to get a, a doctorate in, in, in uh, distilling and, and, and blending, uh, you have to have some understanding of the traditional methods and he's also worked with, uh, you know, uh, master blenders and master distillers. So he, he's had that knowledge passed on to him. So I think that he's basically, um, he has learned how to approach it from either a scientist's focus or someone that actually has a palate like me or you and likes the taste of whiskey. And in the end, he's going to taste that whiskey. And, uh, you know, you, you can put as much science into it as you want. But um, it's the customer that's making you a profit. And these companies have to make a profit to survive. So, uh, in, in the end, you sell a product at a time when we're seeing more and more craft uh, distillers. Are, are emerging across this country. I remember when I I, I first learned about the uh, distillery uh, not too far from where I live. Uh, it was the second malt distillery in Canada. And today there's dozens of malt distilleries in Canada. But at the time it was the second. I think the first one was out in the Cape Breton on the Cabot Trail. Um, but um, it just shows how things have changed. The number of distilleries in this country today, and most of them are, are craft distilleries, and that's a key competition with the big distilleries like Hiram Walker. Now, Corby's basically they produce the Lot 40. It is produced uh, in the uh, I guess we'll call it Walkerville in Windsor, uh, the Windsor plant, and. Um, 
we're going to get into the review on that. So, let's uh, get started. Lot 40. We'll start off with the nose. Now, there isn't a lot of, um, I mean, it's getting the coloring from the casks, and I know that these are number two and number four casks. This is, uh, by the way, 48 ABV. Uh, part of the reason that Dr. Uh, Livermore went to 48 ABV is to pull more out of these two, these two uh, casks that are going to be uh, married together. Now, these were number two char and number four. Now, number two is a little milder char than a number four char. Uh, it's all basically how intense the charring is in the barrel is the number. So they started it off in a number two. They finished it off in a number four. Part of the, the, the rationale behind that is that as you char the barrel more, you pull more of that lingam out of the barrel. This, the, the, those uh, molecules that, that our tongue detects, the sweetness and uh, the various other um, notes that we're getting. Uh, as he would describe them, and, and I've read some of his descriptors and his scientific terminology, I've just forgotten them. They're in these books, by the way, if you buy these books. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get more of that in the whiskey so you can, you can taste it. So the nose. So right off the bat, I'm getting some sweetness mixed with, oh, pumpernickel bread. Maybe even a little bit of eucalyptus menthol in the background there. Cinnamon. And um, ginger snaps. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I've noticed this numerous times, I've been into the, the bottle, and every once in a while I get something different, so the pumpernickel bread, that, that's a new one for me. I do, uh, I do like the pumpernickels, the rye breads. I have had the ginger snaps before. But it, and, I, and, the, and, the, and the pot pourri uh, is basically what I'm getting. is a, It's like a pot pourri pot is what I'm smelling. So very floral. Ginger, uh, I'm getting the citrus notes with the uh, ginger notes. And eh, slight, there's just very slight something burnt there. Um, yeah, not, not... I'm going to say a burnt matchstick, but it's not the sulfury um, end of it. It's it's more like a burnt, the, the wood, the, the burnt matchstick, it's the wood. I, that, and that's got to be the charred barrel, the charred oak. There's a lot of layers here, and I can keep going on and on and on. Uh, I've done numerous nosings of this. Uh, it wasn't on camera, but... Um, I always seem to get something new every time I do it, but um, uh, let's uh, move on. It's got layers. Uh, it's for you to nose, and as we get through the review there, I think that's what the importance is. Is, to, is this worth going out and buying a bottle? So, the palette. Solange. And here's where I get a little confused. Because of the initial taste, yeah, there's rye. I get that, that, I do get the rye. And, you know, not like the rye that I drank when I was younger. It's, um, it's, if you could taste the pork pot, if you could, if you could taste the, 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 the pot pourri pot, of whatever the ingredients are. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what I'm tasting. I'm tasting floral notes. But with it, the, 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 the ginger snap cookies. Um, you know, I'll get a little closer here. I'm going to say maybe a little, 
Maybe pine needles. Maybe that's where I have to go. Um, you, eucalyptus. Um, it's those aromatic uh, notes. And I'm actually tasting them. If I could taste a, a, a really nice sweet tobacco, not a, not a, not a tobacco that has a, a real bite and a burn, but a sweet tobacco, I'm getting a little bit of that as well. And some chocolate, dark chocolate. Uh, with a bit of molasses. In other words, I'm getting stuff that was in the nose. I'm trying to, I'm sort of like getting it into my palate here. And these aren't things we normally would eat, <laughs> but it's a taste thing here, and that's what I'm tasting. A little bit of the pepper now coming through, and that's what I would expect from a rye. But uh, still, that the, the floral and the herbal layers, that, that's what I'm tasting. And I, when we said the pine needles, I finally think I've discovered uh, something there, because I haven't mentioned that one before, but that's kind of closer to where I am, and it's, it, 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 you know, this, this, there's no bite to it, there's no bitterness to it. Um, a, I would say uh, the slight bits of uh, vanilla sneak in, but we're talking um, maybe even a little bit of shortbread, but not dominating like a sherry uh, dessert uh, scotch or something like that. It's still, the, the, the strength of this whiskey is the the floral herbal and um, you know a bit of the spices but really pleasant Sple pleasant to the to, to the palate I mean it's a the finish is 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 is, is going to be uh, a medium I say but let's go for the finish here I'm getting the pine now. Now I'm identifying the mint, the herbal, herbal, herbal tea, and some orange, the citrus. I mentioned the citrus. This is very, very pleasant, and the ginger snaps. But the sweetness is still there, and um, I'm. I'm going to say the, uh, the medium finish, sh short to medium finish, um, toward the tail end of it, a uh, wee bit of that, uh, again, a little bit of that uh, burnt mat wooden matchstick, but not the sulfury notes, so, but, um, I, let's let's get some water in this and let's check it out with water, okay? So. So uh, I do think that water will be okay in a 48. I think we've got uh, enough ABV there that actually the water might even help it a bit. So we're going to see what else we can bring out in this with the water. Oh yes. So we, we just changed the profile again. Lots of citrus, lots of fruit. Um, I'm in a fruit garden. So our pot pourri uh, pot has just gotten very citrusy. But again, chard gardens in the spring. And that's a uh, a famous garden in Victoria, by the way, for, for you that do not know about Bouchard Gardens. And it is seasonal, different times of the year, different things bloom. And, um, wow, <clears throat> beautiful nose. 
I am getting some mandarins. That's the citrus. Not as much pine, but still some aromatic, uh, you know, I guess you could say a wee bit of pine, but the aromatic uh, mentholy notes, eucalyptus. Nice. Um, palette. Boy, did it sweeten it up. I'm going to chew this for a while. And, and, and now we're a honey dipped. Uh, we, we, we've got um, honey coated ginger snaps. And um, certainly uh, the, 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 the hotter pepper spices have disappeared. And we're getting uh, maybe a little bit of the milder nutmeg. Um, I'm getting definitely, uh, oh, fennel. Um, I'm going to say uh, we've got some grassy stuff going on here, but sweet grass. <clears throat> and uh, these aren't typical things I taste in a rye. A little more dessert oriented after after adding the water there. Um, I, I'm actually amazed with, I'm going to say that the, the finish is actually, if we're going to say it's a short medium, it's a longer short medium, that's for sure. So I'm going to say maybe it's a medium, medium, short. How's that? <laughs> or a short, medium, medium. Um, the uh, fruit, the uh, but more ripe fruit, and I'm going to say ripe pears and ripe apples. Good descriptor for it. Anyways, you know, that's going to be it. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to give this a score. Uh, when I'm scoring these, I look at a rye a little different than a scotch. Uh, there, I don't think there's a rye that I used to drink. I don't, you know, Weiser's, the, uh, well, certainly the Gibsons and that that I used to drink. I, I don't think they would have hit the 80 mark. Those early ryes were, they were pretty... Uh, they were pretty harsh, and um, you know, I, I just my palate's changed, and also I've, uh, you know, I've evolved with my, um, you know, with with my nose and, and my palate, and also my study of whiskey, and getting back into rye. This is completely different than the rye I used to drink. Uh, it, it's in a whole different league. So, um, where my other rye would never have made even the 80 mark. This guy's probably going to make the 80 mark. And I'm going to say, you know, 81, 82, somewhere in that area there is where he belongs. Uh, it's a good whiskey. This is a whiskey to have on your, um, on your shelf. Uh, Lot 40, it's, it's uh, basically uh, finished in a number four charred barrel. Start, starts in a number two, uh, so double barreled. Um, interesting bottle. I uh, like the label on it. Very interesting whiskey. Uh, this is under 60 bucks. It's good value for your money. Uh, I, am, I am giving this a mark rated on the price as well. Uh, for $60, uh, and the fact that they can actually pull something. I didn't think rye could ever have that much to offer in, 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 in that complex, layered different flavors and notes so um, certainly well worth the experience so 82 is where I'm going to uh, leave it and I'm going to ask you to drink wisely drink intelligently do not drink and drive and until the next time so much.